running the race, so we're running, running, running the race, so we're running, running, running the race as our heroes cheer us on. Hi, boys and girls, champions, if you will. Thank you for being with us on Summer Games. We sure are glad you're here with us, and you know that you are champions in our book, and you are champions in God's eyes, too. Today, we're doing a game called Faithful Finisher. And what we're going to do is we got people who are going to race with balloons between their legs, and they're going to see who gets here the first without dropping their balloon. If they have dropped their balloon, they have to go back and start over again. This reminds us that in life, we're going to have obstacles. We're going to have things that, that stop us or hinder our, our, our race with God sometimes. And so what we need to do is be faith, finish the race. We need to be keep our eyes on God and finish the race no matter what the obstacles are. And we know there's a lot of obstacles. School, things going on at school, things going on at home. All kind of obstacles. But we can make it with God's help. And so that's what we're going to get from this race, okay? All right, so we got our two racers. One of them fixing his hat. All right. All right, you ready? On your mark, get set, go. I, I, I don't I... Oh, go back. <laughs> oh, we have a faithful finisher. <laughs> what? I meant who finished last? I'm so fast, I went down back. <laughs> All right. So, Hope is our winner. Congratulations, Hope. And again, that just reminds us that we have obstacles. And you see how he dropped his balloon. That was, that's an obstacle in our race. But he went back and was going to go again because he was going to be a faithful finisher. We need to finish the race that we run for Christ. And we need to stick with him from the time we know him as our Lord and Savior until we go home to be with him. We love you. And I hope you will keep that in mind. Be a faithful finisher. Bye! Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Today we have a special demonstration to show what it means to finish strong in our race of faith. This will help us understand the beautiful reward that awaits us at the end of our journey. A crown. This crown represents the eternal reward God promises when we finish our race of faith. It's not a reward you can wear on your head, but one that fills our heart and our soul with joy forever. So I'm going to put this at the end of the obstacle. Now imagine this runner is like each of us, running the race of faith. Along the way, there are obstacles. So I'm going to sit him here. In life, these obstacles that might be challenges or at times when we feel like giving up. But when we keep going, look what happens. So he's in front of this obstacle and he's going to keep dodging them. And then he gets to the end. See, even the race wasn't easy. Our runner made it to the end and received the crown. This is just like us. When we trust in God, stay faithful and don't give up. We too will receive God's amazing reward. Our memory verse reminds us that the greatest prize awaits those who finish the race of faith. But also remember, finishing strong doesn't mean being fastest or the best. 
It means keeping our faith and following Jesus. Let's all aim to be faithful finishers, knowing that God has an incredible reward waiting for us, and that reward is worth every step of the race. I am glad you're with us today for our final stretch in our summer series it's called Summer Games. You know, this has been an exciting journey, and today we're going to discover what it means to finish our race of faith. Now, if you're in a race or you're watching a race, you know that the most exciting part of the race is when you get to the finish line. Today, we're going to look at winning the ultimate prize, the ultimate prize that we get when we run our race of faith and we're faithful to follow Jesus all throughout our lives. Today, we're going to look at a hero of faith named Paul. Now, Paul had some challenges in his life. He went through some really hard times, but he never gave up. He finished, he overcame those obstacles, he just kept running towards the prize, towards that finish line where he knew Jesus would be waiting for him. So let's take a little closer look at Paul and see exactly what he did and how he finished his race so strongly. God's story, Paul. So part of God's story is about a man named Paul and it begins like this. Paul was born in a city called Tarsus. Back then, being born in Tarsus was about as cool as being born in an amusement park. So Paul thought he was cooler than other people, especially the ones who were following Jesus. Paul turned into a real bully. He found ways to get people who were following Jesus thrown in jail, beat up, and even killed. One day, Jesus yelled from the sky, Paul, Paul, why are you acting this way? Then Jesus shined a really bright light, brighter than the sun, right into Paul's eyes. Paul couldn't see anything for three days. Kids, never look straight at the sun. Remember what happened to Paul. After Paul could see again, he decided to listen to God. And not just listen. Paul decided to spend his whole life telling people about God and God's son Jesus. Paul knew if he was going to tell people about God, he better get to know God. Paul found different ways to get to know God. Sometimes he fasted, which is when you skip a meal or many meals, and spend time praying to God instead. Other times, he snuck off alone so he could sit and listen to God. Paul said getting to know God was like training to run a big race. Sometimes training for a race takes work, especially if you want to win. Just like it can sometimes take hard work to fast or sit quietly and listen to God. But for Paul, knowing God was way better than winning first place, even if the prize is a million billion dollars. Once Paul knew God, he was so excited that he wanted to tell everyone, even people he didn't know. Paul became a missionary. A missionary is a person who goes to new places and tells people about Jesus. And even while he was doing this, Paul was writing lots and lots of letters telling other people about Jesus. Now sometimes, Paul found out that not everybody wanted to hear about God. But he told them about God anyway, just to make sure everybody had a chance to hear. Have you ever tried talking to somebody when they weren't listening to you? The people started getting really mad at Paul when he talked. They threw rocks at him beat him up, put him in jail, and even tried to get rid of him completely. Guess what Paul did? He said he'd be happy to go to jail, get beat up, and even die if it means more people know about Jesus. Well, God was with Paul when he was getting beat up and put in jail. One night, God even sent an earthquake to open the doors of the jail so Paul could be free. But instead of escaping, Paul stayed to tell the prison guard about Jesus. Later on, Paul was sent to a bigger city with a bigger jail. To get there, he had to take a boat. During hurricane season, one of the storms hit Paul's boat and it got shipwrecked. Sorry. So he had to swim all the way to a nearby island. Picture swimming in the North Pole with penguins. That's how cold Paul was. But as soon as he saw there were people living on the island, what do you think he did? Yep, he taught them about Jesus. Paul never stopped telling people about Jesus and how Jesus loves everyone and wants to help them stop doing wrong things and teach them how to know him. He got put in jail at least four times, was shipwrecked three times, and was even bitten by a poisonous snake. But Paul didn't care what happened. He was so happy knowing God that he just wanted everybody else to know God too. And that's the story of Paul. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Paul was a bully who didn't follow God. God blinded him for three days. Then Paul believed in God, and he spent time getting to know God. He decided to tell everyone about Jesus. He was willing to have rocks thrown at him, go to jail, get beat up, get shipwrecked, 
or even die as long as he could tell people about God. And that's a part of God's story. When Paul knew that his race was almost over, he wasn't sad, he wasn't afraid, he was hopeful because he knew that as he finished the race, he was going to be there with Jesus and he was going to have a reward from Jesus, a crown of righteousness. You know, in Paul's writings, he talks about how he finished the race. He kept the faith. That's what our job is to do as well. See, just like Paul, we're not perfect. Paul messed up. He did things that were wrong. He didn't always do the perfect thing. But his whole message was about what Jesus did for him, not about what a great man he was. See, when we follow Jesus, we obey him. We do it because we love him. But remember, it's not about our efforts. It's again about what Jesus did on the cross. That's the only way it's possible for us to have his forgiveness, to be saved, to be able to be close to God. Not because we're so great, but because Jesus paid the price for our sins. See, our job is to believe God and remember his love for us and to share that with others. See, Paul's life was a marathon. It wasn't a quick race that was just short and over with. It was a long endurance, just like those runners who run in those marathons. It's long. It's hard. But you're going to get to the end of the race, to that finish line, like we said, is the most exciting part. See, Paul faced hardships. Think about those things he endured. Shipwrecks, beatings, imprisonment. He never gave up, though, no matter how hard it was. He knew that his job was to share Jesus with everyone he could. And when I think about Paul, it's an encouragement to me to keep running that race of faith, not giving up when those obstacles are there, because before you know it, we're going to be at the finish line and we're going to receive a reward for Jesus because of our faithfulness. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that you've called us to run this race to share our faith with others. Help us to enjoy the race. Help us to be like Paul, not give up when it's hard, but to finish our race and keep the faith. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen.